Uh, Mayor Holacek, let's first talk a little bit about uh, what it is that led you to want to seek another four years. Uh, sometimes I ask myself that. I, I think that we have several things in place that we started. Number one being the extensions on the contiguity parcel and the general aviation airport. Those are two major issues. I'd really like to be here to bring those to conclusion and make sure that the city is protected. Right now I'm seeking a four to ten year extension because I don't think that we're financially in a position to look at buying the contiguity parcel or really beginning a GA airport. In addition to that, we also started on exit 120. I'd like to be here to see that come to fruition and conclusion. So I think there were things that we started in this administration and I'd like to be here to, uh, to be a part of them when they, when they conclude. I also honestly, I think that I was a mayor during a period where we had a very heavy economic recession. Obviously it put us back a ways. But I think that Mesquite's going to continue to move forward. I think we're going to prosper. And simply put, I'd like to be here during the good times because I certainly was here for a bit of the bad times. Okay, uh, talk a little bit about what you hope to accomplish in the next five years. Uh, you talked a little bit about the contiguity piece. Uh, what are some of the other things you, you, you hope to see happen in Mesquite in the next five years? Well, I'd like to see the Gateway Sign Program really get up and running. I'd like to see how that impacts our ability to lure businesses here. So that's high on the list. I think that what I'm hearing is when I'm out and about, either from articles in the paper or meet and greet, you know, I believe that this administration has been open and transparent. But it's very clear that we have people that feel frustrated, that, that even though we do things like press releases and the citizens coffee and council meetings and newspaper articles, we just need to do more. So that doesn't mean that we can't adapt and continue to get better. So if the citizens are saying we'd like to have more citizen participation, let's see where we can do that, where it's, it's able to be afforded, and let's, let's also work on that. Let's work on changing that perception. I think we're also changing the perception that business is unfriendly here in Mesquite. We've recently, uh, in fact just a week or two ago, we redid our privilege license application. It was very onerous, 13 pages. So we've streamlined that. We're trying to streamline the processes right now with the project planner. So I think there are things that we can do. I know I've talked to some of the new businesses like Dave with Home Plate, who just recently went in for another license. And I had a chance to ask him, how was the process? Was it okay? Were people friendly? And he said they were. It was wonderful. So I think we can work on that in the next five years. We do, obviously, we want to continue on our tourism and, and our gaming, but we want to look for other businesses coming in. I think we need to, a uh, recent business that looked at Mesquite was high technology. Unfortunately, we don't have, have stream videoing capabilities, so maybe we want to work with our partners, whether it's Reliance or Baja, and see if we can address some of that, because I think we'd like to see some of those technology companies come in. Um, generally, I hear they pay higher. It's a higher hourly wage. So we'd like to keep our diversification portfolio going on as well. Okay. You talked about transparency. One of the things that gets discussed a lot uh, is the approach uh, that council members are not allowed to comment during the public, uh, during the public comments. Correct. In particular, they're not allowed to, uh, to answer questions or... Uh, Interact. In, exactly. Sure. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Well, I noticed that when I was on council, there was a lot of interchange and interplay uh, when people coming up to the microphone, council commenting back. When I became mayor, if, uh, we were reminded, um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but when you're a new council member, you do go through ethics training. Um, you sit with um, people from the Attorney General's office. They talk to you and teach you about the open meeting law. And one of the recommendations, and of course I find this on other boards I sit on, like LBCBA, again, we are instructed, this is the time for the public. You are not supposed to be discussing, coming to conclusions, or deliberating on things during the open, during the public comment. 
you can easily get things agendized and then you can have that interplay you can discuss things back and forth so that has been a recommendation of the city attorney the city manager as I say it doesn't seem unusual because I do find it on LBCBA but you know we'll continue to look at that the Attorney General says in fact that we are doing it correctly so we just have to find a way to get a comfort level to the people so they know we're listening to them and and we do want to talk to them so maybe we just ask them to come forward and say please agendize this because we want to talk to you about this that's what happened on the flood and we set up a, a flood workshop and I thought that was great you mentioned uh, it's easy to get things on the agenda talk about the process how that comes about how can someone get something on the agenda well they can go uh, obviously if they're going through the the planning and building department process that would be a natural course of event for Tim Hacker to put on if it's a matter of changing an ordinance or a code uh, Miss Lorbeer might put it on so department heads and staff can put things on um, if you come to me I can put things on if a council member wants to put things on usually what they do is they ask for two council members to be the petitioner to get it on okay uh you, the technical reviews is something that is actually uh, something yeah. that, that you created. Sure. Uh, talk a little bit about how, how you got to that and the value of the technical reviews. Sure. And I know that that's kind of up in the air and in play right now. <clears throat> Again, what, what we were finding is that the council members were really trying to do due diligence. And so they were going to each of the department heads who had an agenda item wanting to ask questions about it. Well, when you have five people going to staff members and probably really asking a lot of the same questions, we thought it was important for each council member to be hearing the same complete information, getting the same story. And it also, as far as staff time, was you want one time where staff can maybe answer the questions. What I had heard when I was out and about, uh, I actually, I think I heard this first from Mike Montandon, uh, who was the mayor of North Las Vegas, he said, well, you know, we have technical reviews where we actually sit down with the council members and we'll answer questions in one fell swoop. So they're all getting the same information. Then in checking, we found out that other jurisdictions as well, it's just a means of, of educating the council members so that they're trying to get good information. So we said to the council members, do you want to do this? Do you want to try this? And they said, yeah, it seems to be, let's try it, see how it works. It's never been mandatory. Uh, many times they don't show up at all. It's available if they wish to show up, uh, but it isn't mandatory. Now it seems like um, I think there's concern in the community. They think perhaps the council members are deliberating when they're not. Um, I recently sent out um, an email to all the council members saying, you know, this is something that we did and you all said you wanted. Um, you know, if you don't want them anymore, I I'm fine with not doing it. It was a, a form that was offered, but clearly I work with council, and if they choose that they do not want this anymore because of, of a perception, I'm fine with it. Okay. Uh, you mentioned during the recent forum, uh, or during a recent forum, that you are not involved in union negotiations, and Correct. that's going to be a big part of the upcoming budget and probably budgets for the for the next little bit till the economy turns around. Sure. Um, specifically, you mentioned you're not involved in those union negotiations and that you're not allowed to be. Is that by rule? Is that by practice? Is that part of the contract? Where where does that where does that come from? I think it's just been by practice. Um, I don't know of any rule. I know that Tim Hacker and Mike Callahan have always, or they've done the negotiations before. I just think that when I talk to other jurisdictions, I believe it's Boulder City, a council member or their mayor sits in on them. I think other jurisdictions do that. And I really think that because we're, we are supposed to respond to our constituents, and they have grave concerns about budget issues. I just think that it is very important, particularly this time, for either the mayor or council member to be in the room with the negotiation so we can tell them what we're hearing from the people that we represent. Not that Mike Callahan or Tim don't come report back to the mayor and council about what would happen, but when you're in the room, there's a different feel. There's a different interaction with the union. So personally, that's my feeling. I think we need to be in this year for sure.